Welcome to today's podcast interview. I brought on Dean Griffiths. Dean, welcome. Hi, Heather. Thanks for having me on the show. Yes, uh, the pre-call was going to go forever because we speak the same language and I love nerding out on this stuff. So I'm excited for today's convo. For those new to you, please give a little background. Where do you live and what do you do? Okay, so I'm based in London in the UK. Uh, my background is actually in personal training and sports rehabilitation. So I started my career working with the physical body. But actually what I found was over time is that my clients were getting better, but they would always sabotage it in some way. And I realized actually it was their mind that was blocking it. So it took me on a journey um, of understanding the mind, but also then adding techniques to help people. And once I started adding these techni- techniques in that actually help their mind, now the physical work that I was doing that was actually having better results. So for me, it's kind of it was a great reminder that the mind and body are, are not separate from each other because so much of what we do in the world that we live in right now, everything's treated as separate. So for me, I had to go through that journey of understanding the body, which is important, but not realizing that the mind is where the control center really comes from. And if we can't, I suppose, not control it, but get an understanding of that, yeah, then everything else is going to be sabotaged or affected in some way. So for me, that's a very short kind of journey of where I've been, but it's been over, over near 30 years now. A quote that comes to mind around that is whatever the mind can conceive and believe the body will achieve. I know this yes. personally. Now. I'm very much, uh, I like, I'm practical. I want to implement, I want to apply. Like I, I can hear theory and whatever, but I want to test it. <clears throat> so I personally have put this into play. I ran a marathon. I've done triathlons. I'm an endurance athlete and I a hundred percent know it's a mindset game. Yeah. And it, especially, especially with those kind of events that you've done as well. Professional athletes. We know, you know, here in the States, baseball players get in quote slumps. I recently watched this. I don't know if you had this in the UK, but there was a documentary last year following the PGA players called Full <laughs> Swing. It was freaking amazing. I loved it. I think it was eight episodes and you could see anytime self-doubt, negative um, talk came in if they were you know just had a terrible swing and shanked the ball then they would mess up the next hole only to highlight that it's the mind if you can learn to discipline your mind you're literally unstoppable so here's what I want to know about you maybe um, what do you love to teach most about mindset or what is important that people miss self-worth Everything for me comes back to our level of self-worth. I, I, I say to people, you can achieve whatever you want, exactly as your quote said. But if you don't believe it's, that you're worthy of having it, yeah. it doesn't matter what you do. You'll sabotage it, you'll miss opportunities, whatever it is. And I've seen this time and time again. Really come to, again, it's again, just, it's always reminding people that we've got stories in our mind that we were given at a very young age that we still believe and we still kind of live our life by. And we've never challenged those beliefs or stories. So we, we continue to live by them. And we, we seek, and the brain actually seeks confirmation all the time to keep confirming that you're safe and secure. So until we challenge our, our, our beliefs about who we are and actually what we think is right and wrong, then we will continue to keep doing the same. So for me, until you change your, your level of self-worth or what you believe you're worthy of, your life probably won't differ too much from where you've already been. Okay. I love this. And what I see mostly come across, I have what's called a life assessment on my website. And really, if you think of it like this, what is the common denominator of all of our life areas? Us, you specifically. So if your financials are off, if your relationships are struggling, if your business is flailing, common denominator is you. And that is what I have found. It's until what I think of is our mind is a mental garden. And until you become aware of the weeds in your garden, what I preach and teach my clients is you got to pull the weeds, plant new seeds. Yeah. But somebody new to this, Dean, how do we help them to become aware of those? Because so much is unconscious. How do you become aware of these disempowering beliefs and create a better reality? Okay. So the, the first step that I teach everybody is to take ownership of your life. This means that, You've got to look at your life regardless of what, you know, I've worked with people who have been physically and emotionally abused, and you have to say, everything that's happened in my life, I didn't consciously choose, but on a deeper level, I've asked to have this experience for, for one reason or not. So as soon as you take ownership of whatever's happened in your life, now you can do something with it. 
whilst you're blaming other people or circumstances for your life, you have no control over changing it. Yeah. So for me, until you take ownership of the life that you've lived and the life that you're living, everything is independent on, on other people because it's because of them that I this is happening to me. I can't change this because of this situation. If 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 we use that narrative, then of course your life, you know, going back to the quote that you said earlier on, until we change how we think about these things, nothing can change in our life. Okay, but Dean, I have a question for you. If you were to call somebody out and say, hey, that victim mentality isn't working for you, it's not helping you, most people will not claim that and be like, I'm not a victim. I'm not. So let's give some symptoms yeah. or examples of somebody who is victim mentality and maybe doesn't even realize it. Yeah. So the and 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 the one thing I say to people in, in that situation who struggle with that, I say, what's the benefit of someone else having ownership over that situation rather than you having ownership over it. So I, I worked with a young girl years ago who was abused in multiple relationships. And I said exactly this to her when, when I first worked with her. I said, um, what's the common denominator in all your relationships? She goes, well, all these guys were assholes. They were this, 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 and this. I said, no, the common denominator was you. And she she was not happy. Mm -hmm. She was like, whoa, defensive. I go, I go, I get it. I can see why you're thinking that way. But do you not see that until you change how you see that situation, you change that situation, then nothing can change. So she actually left. She she walked out. But then she came back, sent me an email and said, you know what? You're right. Until I can change how I'm seeing the situation and what I'm thinking about, I'm only going to keep, keep attracting the same thing. Yeah. I said, exactly. And again, it's... We often, to, to be honest, m there's two ways that people's life will change. The second is, is the idea, which is inspiration, that we get inspired to change. This is why we watch documentaries, we, we read books, whatever, because hopefully we get inspired by something that will allow us, you know what, it's time for me to change my life. But yeah. the majority of people won't change until the pain or discomfort is bad enough. So I had a client, who personal training client who I worked with for many years, who would work 70, 80 hours a week, would miss personal training sessions on a regular basis until he got diagnosed with cancer. Mm. And then he was happy to make sure that he turned up for most of these sessions yeah, because he had no choice. He had to put himself first. Again, you can say, is that the wrong way? No, there's there's different. We, we all have to learn different ways. So sometimes we need the, the, the pain and discomfort, and sometimes we need to be inspired by stuff. But it's just knowing for me, they're normally the two ways that most people have to go through to kind of want to change or in, in most cases need to change. Yes. And, you know, a, re a big reason I, I do the podcast and coaching is I don't want people to wait until burnout or rock yeah. bottom or bankruptcy or a health scare. But you are right. Like you any slight discomfort, if like you're just getting by, if if life feels like a hamster wheel, which is where I was living in autopilot, that is the time to course correct. You can yeah. still course correct from rock bottom, but it's a hell of a lot easier to catch it sooner. But again, you know, I, for me, it's, I think sometimes we actually need that. We need that such of a shift in our mind. And again, you know, the, the funny thing, I've also worked with people where they've been through those experiences and over time they've gone back into their old habits. So even sometimes even that's not enough to shift certain people. Again, if we take it to a deeper level, if we look at this at a soul level, we realize that certain souls are here to learn different things. And some souls are quite young in their development, which means in this lifetime, what they're learning may appear to other people who've been through a lot of lifetimes going, wow, that's, you've got to change it. They go, no, everyone's on their own journey. So there isn't a right formula or a wrong formula. It's just knowing that, could there be easier ways of doing it? Yes, of course. But the thing is, is that we all have to learn our own way and we have to respect other people's way of doing that also. Okay, on that note, can we talk about, well, you know, Tony Robbins always says life is happening for you. And I've gotten to the space of, I actually have a, a different belief that life is happening through you. Thank you. That's exactly what I say. Okay. So yes, knowing that, because I preach that the mind is the cause of every effect in your life. And this is something big in quantum physics. When you truly understand the energetics of the universe, how thoughts become things, your thoughts and emotions, creating this feedback loop and learning it when you discipline your mind and start being intentional and mindful, maybe let's go that route. 
Yeah. But also let me add one thing to that is that remember, we're not in control of our lives. We we're there, there's a plan in our life already that we have to go through. So there are certain relationships, circumstances that we all have to go through at a soul level that are out of our control. So yes, we our mind can achieve way more than we realize, but there are certain situations that we can never avoid. We have to go through them. So for me, it's also knowing that there's a balance here. Yes, not to get people to like, you know, the secret and the, um, those kind of things are, are were powerful things, but we have to realize it's all about balance. We we need to realize that we we need the the the, the dark as much as we need the light. We need the balance between the two. Well, because we live in a world of duality, up, exactly. down, left, right, wrong. Here's my question. What you just said there, there's things that we, quote, can't avoid. Another way I've heard it said is the script is written. Our life yeah. script but here's my question in that. What it's kind of hard for me to grasp. If the if my path, my journey has already been written, what about free will? And it's funny because I've 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 got I've got a book coming out later this year, um, and I talk about free will in there. We have the perception of free will, but most people don't because they're playing out old stories in their subconscious mind that are not their stories, but they're playing out their stories anyway. So the the perception of free will, yes, possible. But the problem is most people not doing anything to change the stories that they have in their subconscious mind. So they don't have real free will at what we think or what we would like it to be. Okay. They have a perception of it. Okay. What I hear you saying there. So most people, anyone who's tuned in my podcast, I, ta- I talk about the conscious mind and subconscious a lot. Yeah. But maybe for somebody who's newer to that, let's talk about that. And what I hear you saying on that note that maybe the perception of free will if if you don't become aware and understand that we quote we're programmed literally in the womb up until a certain age and then we the analytical mind was formed and we can start asking questions but of those primary years that's where we learn about love relationships money all most people's main struggles so can you explain the subconscious programming and how maybe it's blocking our free will? Yeah, and, and I have to remember that the the subconscious program that we have is not bad. It's just a version that we've been given. And this yes. is based on our parents, our ancestors. So this goes back generations as well. It's not just about our parents. This goes back um, generations for all of us. And it's realizing that we're given a set of ideas, thoughts, beliefs, that some are very helpful because it, it, if we, we say they're all bad, that's not a good way of looking at it. Some yeah. are good, some are bad, some will help us to a certain degree. But they're all there to give you, I suppose, a, I suppose like a blueprint that you can use to build whatever you want to build in your life. But the idea is that most people think that's what it is and they, they don't think about it. You know, Joe Dispenza would say that by age 35, mm-hmm. most people are literally living the same life over and over again. Um, my teacher in from, from the, the fitness side, but also very spiritual, uh, Paul Check says most people over the age of 30 are just walking zombies. They're literally just repeating a, a program over and over again. So your subconscious mind, which is where the ego comes from, this is where our ego comes from. Again, we, we a lot of people will put the ego down as the bad guy. No, the ego is just repeating the pattern that it's been told. It's repeating the stories that it's been told. So all these things are important for us because we all need a starting point to work from. But the problem is, is that, and remember, for the brain, it always wants to keep um, things simple. It wants to save energy. It will make sure that it tries to repeat everything that it's already been told. If you keep telling the brain the same thing, it will keep doing the same thing. So it's great for that, right? But the thing is, if you can tell it a different story, it would do that also. Because the brain doesn't know the difference between the past, future, now. It only knows now. So when you give it a, a statement now, like we, we were speaking before about affirmations and those kind of things, then your brain thinks it's happening right now. So all these things are we're not we're not victims of what's happened in our past. They were just a blueprint that we can use to create the life that we want in the future. That's all. Okay. What came to mind? What you were just sharing there is the mind is its job is to keep us safe. Yeah. Now a lot of people we talk about our comfort zone. And the comfort zone is simply the known. I love how Ed Milet, he's the one that I first heard explain it, but we all have a thermostat. Quote, you you were just saying a blueprint. So we all have a thermostat, a set point, let's say 75 degrees. So if you're disempowering stories, you know, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, understand this is subconscious programming. 
That's why think about patterns, habits, memories, etc. So in order to get out of the unknown, your current reality, we we have to, well, I think of the term surrender and live in the present state, letting go of all that past stuff. Yeah, totally. How do you do that? Yeah, I mean, again, not easy to do, right? Because we're we're in a sense, the society that we live in right now is all about switched on, go, go, do, do, do all the time. We live in a world where there's constant input coming into our brains. Our brains are being overloaded with so much information that our brains are processing all this information. But remember, it can only focus on certain things during the day. So if we don't give it anything to focus on, if we don't remember, the brain loves questions. So if we don't give our brain, if we don't give ourselves questions every day. So for me, one of the things I teach people is make sure that you're asking empowering questions every day. What do I need to focus on today to achieve this particular goal? this relationship, the, this job, whatever. Because if you're not giving your brain questions that are helping you achieve the life that you want, most of the questions that most people are thinking of are things like, oh my God, why do I have to go to the office today? Why am I still in this relationship that I hate, right? Because that's how most people are thinking. Remember, the brain is easier for the brain to think negatively than it is to think positively. So we have to remember, it has to become a conscious awareness of being able to ask questions and also uh, attach ourselves to things that will empower us. So this could be like listening to podcasts, this watching videos, reading books, hanging out with people who are like-minded or people who have a life that we're looking to achieve as well. But also there's the opposite, the opposite as well, which is also important. So I remember hearing about a CEO in the US many years ago who once a month would have dinner with people who had a totally different opinion to him. Uh, because he, he wanted well. to... He, 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 he understood that what he believed was true to a certain point, but he also wanted to see, well, what other things could someone tell me that maybe would make me think differently about it? So the, there is a certain, you know, especially in, in the kind of personal development and spiritual realm, everyone thinks, you know, you've got to find your tribe and the people that resonate on your kind of way of thinking, I think, which is, I think, true to a certain degree. But you've also got, if you know, if you really want to get out of your comfort zone, You've got to also put yourself in, in, in the face of people who don't think the way, same way as you, that have a different way of thinking. Because I, I often find, so the way that I we check subconscious beliefs is we use muscle testing. And one of the techniques I use is a technique called Psyche, where we use muscle testing to, to see what you believe. And, and a lot of people say, the most common one I, I always start with is, I love myself and I hate myself. And over ten last 10 years of doing it, 99% of people hate themselves and don't love themselves yep. or they love and they hate themselves. Yeah. So we have a lot of beliefs that we think are true about ourselves, which are not. So for me, yes, you need to be in the right environment to help change that, which is important, but you also need to be in environments where it challenges you to that, to see whether it's actually true or not. Because yeah. if we don't challenge our beliefs in any way, then we will continue to think that we believe exactly what we do. So for me, it's finding that balance between the two. For me, everything comes back to finding a balance. There isn't a wrong or right way of doing it. There's knowing that you need exposure to both to really find your kind of truth in, in, in effect. Okay, a couple notes on that. Something you touched on in the beginning there was asking better questions. Yeah. And here's, a, here's what I have found as an easy reframe, because, you know, again, we tend to think negatively, that's not possible, not possible for me, whatever. So let's say there's a condition, something you desire, a home, more money, a business, whatever the condition is. I have learned to ask the question, how is this possible for me? Or how can I make this happen? So asking that, like it's it's opening your perception on its own, and then the mind starts going to work finding possibilities. Exactly. So I just want to offer that to people. Something else you just touched on there, and this came this is timely. This came across twice yesterday. I saw on LinkedIn that the habits and your coping mechanisms and whatever that got you to today are not going to get you to the next quote, level or state exactly. or whatever. Can we talk about that? Because you're really big on upgrading your mind. Yeah. How do we do yeah. that? Because I've worked with the body, most people will get this. You, you can train your body for years, but if you stop training your body, what's going to happen? Sooner or later, it's going to go, you know, start getting unhealthy, right? So it's the same with the mind. When I say this to people, they kind of get it on a, on a, on a intellectual level, but they go, but what does that actually mean? I go, you train your brain every day because where you are right now is based on 
habits and behaviors of the past. But where you're trying to get to in life, the same you that's going to experience that is not the same you that you are right now. So you have to connect with the future self. Now, obviously, in quantum phys physics and everything, there are multiple options for all of us. There are a multitude of timelines that we could actually converge onto. So the idea is you need to connect with a future version of you. So this is where the imagination is beautiful. So visualization, journaling, for me, are two def best ways of doing this, is that you create words. So um, I forget his name, but so I, I use a statement every morning where I go, I'm so happy and grateful now. Bob Proctor. Bob Proctor, thank you. And then you create your statement. And, and I write this down every single day. Yep. So that's one way to, again, the repetition, very important yes. to do that. And then the visualization. So I... I visualize myself in a home that I want to be living in in the future. And, and, and I do this multiple times throughout a day. It comes back into my mind when I'm not even thinking about it because I've been doing it for so long now. So you have to give your mind things that it's working towards. If your mind's got nothing to kind of work towards, like I said, it will just keep doing the same thing because it's got nothing else to do. Yeah. So we have to give it things that are going to take it to another level. Everything is always about going to another level. Even with the the, the, the physical body, we can get to a certain point, but even to maintain, you still got to do a certain amount of work to do that. But because on, on a mental, emotional level, we all want to improve probably over time, then yeah. it means you've got to do more work. I always say you probably, for most people, you need to be spending more time doing work on your mind than you do on your body. Yes, I love that. Um, okay, we're used to this. We know the lingo and we're doing the practice because we're teaching it, right? So somebody who's new to this and we're talking about, you know, just imagine your future self. Imagine you at that healthy weight or in that thriving relationship or the money, business, whatever you desire. But they're like, I can't imagine that. I've not experienced that. Can you walk through a process or visualization or something you can teach so they have a tangible takeaway? See, the, the brain has, I suppose what we call models in it what well, it creates our, our world around us. So even the world that we live around us is based on our brain's idea of how it all looks. So the world that we live in is based in an illusion. It's, you know, if, if we look at, so for example, the eyes, they see in 2D, not 3D, but we see the world in 3D. That's because the brain steps in and makes sure that it gives it shape and color and contour and everything. So it's knowing that when we create something, when we first start creating a, a new idea that we have no idea how we're going to create it. And again, this is really important is I say to my clients is, I want you to think about whatever you want in your life that you have no idea how you're going to create it. Because if you give yourself an idea where you go, actually, all you need to do is this, this, and this, that's not enough for your brain. Yes, you may achieve it to a certain degree. But if you can give your brain something that's way beyond your your uh, logical way of thinking, you go, I actually have no idea how I'm going to achieve that. Now you're giving your brain something that it has to work on. So it Going back to the imagination is what you'll start with is something that you already know. So it, let's say you, it's a relationship or a home or even a job. We, we've all got in our brains a particular model. So a, a relationship may be the, a little relationship that we had when we were younger, depending on your age. Some people may be that they had a marriage, but that will be their starting point for their brain to create the first images of that because that's what it's got. Remember, our brain can only use what it has right now. Then as you give it more information and you think uh, bigger and you give it more questions, then it starts opening up to different options, starts bringing in other people. And if we're connected to our soul and we're open to spirit, then it starts bringing in the people. Sometimes we actually get visualizations of the people that we're going to meet or the house that we're going to have or the job or even the place that we're going to travel, whatever it is. So for most people, it's a case of starting off and just getting any idea that allows you to – remember, as human beings, we're feeling people. So what you're looking for is something that makes you feel like the person that you're going to be having that experience in the future. Because the more we can attach to the feeling of it, the mm -hmm. more our mind can then create it in there as well. So for most people with the imagination part, they have to start with something that they're probably familiar with because that's given them brain something to work from. But then we got to tap into the feeling part of it as well because we go, how would I feel when I'm living in this home or I have this relationship or this job? Yeah. Okay, this is how I'm going to feel. Okay, now what can I do to tap into that feeling more often? What other things can I do that will allow me to tap into that feeling? Because we can't just tap into that feeling just doing one thing. We can tap into that feeling doing many different things. The idea is then to find different things that will allow us to tap, tap into that feeling. So if it's a simple thing like happiness, and again, happiness, for example, is not something that you have for a period of time. Happiness is a moment. So what you do, you then seek more moments of happiness. 
And the more you seek more moments of happiness, then more, life will bring you more, more moments of happiness. It's the same with gratitude. If you want to be more, if you want more moments of gratitude in life, learn to be more grateful for the moments that you have right now in your life. So everything is that we start from a point of what's possible in my mind right now. And then I, I have to keep building on that over and over time by giving my, my, my mind, my brain, different ways to think about it, more questions. What do I need to do? And one of the most questions I use pretty much every day is, what can I do today or focus on today that can help take me closer to the dream that I'm trying to do? Yeah. Okay. Something I would, are you familiar with Neville Goddard? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I love Neville Goddard and I would just like to offer this for what you just shared. I want to show a simple way to implement this. So Neville Goddard (laughs) teaches to live from the end, which is exactly what you were saying to feel the emotions Because look, we've been taught the old way. When something happens, then I'll feel happy. When I get promoted, then I'll feel empowered. When blank happens, then no. Quantum teaches us that when I feel abundant, wealthy, love, connection, whatever, then I get the money, relationships, success. So you guys, what we're telling you is, I love this analogy too, that life is a mirror. Yes. Whatever's and we've heard this, um, as within, so without. When you are feeling, and I get it, like if this is new to you, I call it building the mindset muscle. Start with five dollars. I'm so happy and grateful now that five dollars has come my way. And I I this is really fun. I did this. I, I dated this guy before. He always joked about, and then I found five dollars, and then I found five dollars. And he would always say this, and I cannot make this up. He was over. I had taken my dog on a quick potty break, took her for a walk. Can't make this shit up. Five dollar bill is laying against the fence. <laughs> it's because we had been thinking about and joking about and talking about five dollars. So here's what Abraham Hicks would tell us: It's as easy to manifest a castle as it is a button. It's the exact same formula, whether it's five dollars or a trillion. Same process. Exactly. Yeah. So we want you to get in the. F- Let's say you want to be married. Imagine yourself on your honeymoon. Imagine yourself already married with a family, whatever you desire. Imagine that because even Bob Proctor always said, everything's created twice, once in the imagination and then in 3D. And and then start having fun with this, Yeah. right? So let me share a story. Uh, one, One of my close friends, she was single at the time and she wanted a relationship. So she took her dog out for a walk. And while she was walking back, something caught her eye in, in, in the grass on the floor and she went over and she picked up and it, it was a costume um, ring. So she would wear it on her engagement ring finger. Now she started doing it only um, at home, but then she started forgetting and she started wearing it out and people would say to her, Oh, I didn't know you were engaged. Didn't know you were in a relationship. So she's now started. So uh, especially with relationships, I always say to people, if you want to bring a relationship or another way to do this is also create space for that person in your home. So in the bedroom, in the wardrobe, in in the drawers, make sure there's space for that person to put their things in there. When you wake up in the morning, say good morning, darling. Good morning, whatever the what it is. When you when you go to sleep at night, speak to them as if they're already there in your life. So yeah, exactly yeah. as you're saying, we need yeah. to connect more and more in different ways with this future version. Because remember, most people, you know, it's this kind of saying you need to chase after your dreams. To go, if it's moving away from you, then it's probably not meant for you. We're meant to bring it to us, not we go to it, right? right. Because we are the, the the vessel for which everything comes through, right? So we need to bring it to us. So it's being able to create the environment that the thing that you want, it knows that you're ready for it. Remember, we have to get ready for these things. We have to become that person before that that situation, that life comes to us, right? Don't chase attract. Yes. Or Dr. Wayne Dyer, I heard, um, read it in a book of his, we don't attract what we want, we attract what we are. So yes. I just want to empower people to realize you have so much power, so much untapped potential that we're just scratching the surface. So here's what I want to hear from you, something that you shared before we started recording. You recently did a mushroom ceremony. Can we talk yeah. about that? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so... um in the world that we live in right now, it seems quite chaotic. It seems like things are going, again, if, if, if we look at astrology, we're moving from 2,000 years of Pisces, the masculine, to 2,000 years of Aquarius, the feminine. 
So there's this big struggle going on, right? I mean, you see it so clearly in the world around you with masculine, feminine, male, female, what is a man, what's a woman, right? This is all exactly as it's meant to be right now. So right now, so the, the narrative that a lot of people are using is, is that certain people are in control of the world. So as I was sharing before with Heather is that I did a, a mushroom ceremony on my own um, about two months ago, and I was asking exactly this question. But I also saw um, like two days before this, um, and I forget his name. Uh, there's a guy who channels a particular guy through him, uh, Darren, Darren, someone like that. His name is, and basically someone was asking him this very question. And this guy was saying, "Look, all these people are in control of the world. How do we change it?" He says, "Stop, stop, stop, stop." He says, "No one's in control." And the thing is, on my mushroom ceremony, I had exactly the same thing shown to me. It showed us, and then the people in in a sense who were controlling us above us, and then it's panned out. And went, wow, no one's in control. You can't control the infinite. No one's in control of anything. How control works is, is you create the illusion of control. And when you can get someone to believe in the same way we're talking about, if you want to create what you want in the future, you have to believe it's possible. If someone wants to convince you that something's true, this is what magic's all about. Magic is the idea. So um, I'm reading all about uh, ma magic at the moment. And really to, to, to do magic, it's, it's one of two things. Either you uh, you convince someone that it's happening, or you actually make it happen. So a lot of card tricks is all about making making people look in a different way while you do something else somewhere else. And this is what life is all about. This is, in a sense, the people who are successful in control, whatever you want to call it, they do it because they know how to manipulate the mind of people to convince them that something's true, but even if it's not. So yeah. the, the ceremony for me was just a reminder, look, no one's in control. We give our control away. But if you want your control back, then let go of thinking that someone has it in control. Because why you think someone else is in control, then that's what's going to happen. Once you realize that you're in control, now you can change everything. Yeah. It's taking your power back. Yeah. Here's absolutely. what it wrote down while you were sharing that. Fear is the biggest virus any of us should be concerned about. Like, actually, only that one, really. And we witnessed, I'm not going to um, go too far down that rabbit hole, but we witnessed <laughs> the power of fear in the last couple of years, the power of fear that, you know, people were seeking externally and, and thinking they needed to inject things to, to heal themselves more or less. Right. Yeah. So fear and quote, the powers that be will do what they need to do to keep us uh, sleepwalking. Yeah, I mean, until, yeah. Go, no, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, and, and this uh, idea has been thrown around for at least a year or whatever the mass, the great awakening. Yes. We're waking up. Yeah. The, the, you have to forget this is all part of the game. Not Everything that's happening right now is all part of the game. If mm. you realize that, like I said, a life is a Maya illusion, everything that we see is not true. We give it meaning. The more you give something meaning, the more it becomes more prevalent in your life. So the idea is that everything that is there is only there because you believe it. This is what quantum uh, mechanics has shown. When you focus on something in particular, that's what you see more of. So if you focus on the negative people being in control or whatever it is, you will find it. Your brain will go, I can give you more and more of that. I, I, I watched a video yesterday where a guy was actually showing and I can't remember exactly what it is. Let's say it was about coffee. I think, actually, I think it was about coffee. He said, if you Google how, why coffee is bad for me, Google will give you lots of answers or articles that you can read why coffee is bad for you. But then, then if you go back to Google and go, why is coffee good for me? Google will give you lots of uh, articles and everything that tell you why coffee is good for you. Whatever you information, going back to the questions, I think, whatever you put out, the intention, as you were saying earlier, that's life will give you back. It says, if that's what you want to know more of, I'm happy to give that. And also the other thing, which is really important for a lot of people is remember when you are saying, I don't want, I don't like yeah. your brain life thinks, Oh, that's what you want more of. I, I can give you, I can give you more of that. That's fine. So always sit and speak in a way that is positive, that is empowering to you. I, and you know, and the, as you know, this Heather, the most two powerful words that you can use is I am because until you realize that I am something, yeah. then you're only someone hoping to, to be that person. Dean, I, I wrote this down. I love the word you used, game. 
This is the game of life and how to play yes. it. Yeah. And what I want really, I want people to like get excited about this. This is none of this was to like, oh shit them. But no, this is to excite you, to wake you up. And when you understand the game and, and the moving parts and the pieces, what's possible? Everything is, that, I mean, that's the beauty of it. I mean, again, we have to be careful as thinking that you can't you can't have absolutely everything you want. But for most people, you can achieve way more than what you have right now. Yeah. And, you know, I, I had a client this, you know, going back to the whole kind of idea of the game of life, which is I, I use in my book as well, because it's so it's an easy way for people to get it is that we go through different levels. The game is not meant to be easy. That's what makes games exciting. If all games were easy and we won every time, then why would you play them? You want the game to be difficult. You want the game to be hard. And there are certain areas where you go, I've got to go back and do that again and again and again until I get it before it goes to the next level. So I, I had a client who's a lawyer um, in Dubai and he was struggling. He was looking to get promoted and he was annoyed because someone who was younger than him got to that level before he did mm -hmm. i said you're looking at the game wrong yeah look at how he did it he was playing the game that it was meant to do so we have games within games also so if you work in the corporate world there are games being played within the companies you can play the game learn to play the game so if you want to get higher up the corporate ladder learn to play the game within your company yeah. if you work in uh you're self-employed you still got to learn to play the game there's a different game playing being played there so in relationships, games are being played all the time. Families is a great one for it. There's always games being played in, in families, right? So it, with everything, you'll go back and realize. So this client, once he realized and he started applying his version of what this other person did, the funny thing, this is where it's so funny, because he was looking to get to the next level in partnership. And there were no spaces. that There were actually too many people who were going to be kind of going for that role. In the space of, I think, literally like one week, Firstly, the guy that he was frustrated with, he left the company. And then two other people who were up for the same uh, partnership, they also uh, stepped aside. They left. So literally, all we had to do was step into that role because he realizes once I play the game the way that I've been shown, now I can now create whatever I want from it. So back to the idea of the game. Um, for me, you know what I even use is... <clears throat> In order to get out of being jealous of somebody else, jealous of somebody's success, well, perceived success, right? I use yeah. it as evidence of what's possible. And I'm like, if it's possible for them, it's possible for me. Just like the four-minute mile. The four-minute mile rule. Somebody created belief that a human could run a mile in less than four minutes. He did it, Roger Bannister. And within a couple of weeks, now uh, more did it. And now I think... A few thousand people have done it. Yeah, and yeah. even if you look at the the marathon, that that the the two hour mark was broken. Yeah, only a couple of years ago, you're going to see that now get broken more consistently because now, like I said, once the belief, and it, this goes back also back to the physical body. So in in um in the brain, when when an impulse passes through a nerve once, it will do so again on a future occasion. So, so it only, we, we only have, to, again, again, for change to happen in the world, we only need 1% of the world to believe it's possible, and then that change can happen. That's how powerful it is. There was a study done with TM, done, I think, many years ago, I think maybe in Chicago somewhere, where they brought the crime rates down by a notable number because a group of TM meditators were there focusing on love. I can't remember exactly the study, but it just shows you we don't need a lot of people to be aware we just need 1% to be aware and be focused on change and change will happen for everybody. I would love to know some of your daily rituals to keep you in, you know, because I call myself personal trainer for your mind. So we speak the same metaphors. So what daily rituals, maybe morning, evening, what are you doing for that mental discipline to stay forward, focus, empowering beliefs? Because this takes work. Yeah, this this is about consistency. You have to be consistent. Again, most people are doing only doing things when things are not going well for them. For me, I actually double down when things are not going well for me. I actually do more. So for me, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do, the first words I use are creating the tone for the rest of the day. So I always wake up and go, good morning. Thank you for an amazing day today. So I'm, I'm, I'm setting the tone for what I want my day to be like. 
now i so i i journal i so the i use another technique that i use is eft emotional freedom technique the tapping technique so i do eft every day i've got a uh, particular scripts that i use for myself and then for my clients depending on the problem i then journal and i also now the other thing i also do is i create tracks where i speak so what i do is i i do words of affirmation for myself and then i put it into a um a programmed music but I turn my voice down. So I can't hear my voice, but my brain can. And I'm playing this track to myself every morning or so. So that's how I start my day. So from the start of my day, I'm already getting my brain into a mode of thinking only in a certain way. This is what's going to happen. And whatever's on my mind, I will be thinking about. So maybe say I'm thinking about someone negatively. Maybe something isn't working out for me. I go, no, no, it's all good. Don't worry. We've got this. I will remind myself very quickly. No, I know I I don't know the answer right now, but the answer is going to come to me for whatever this problem is. So then I will connect with my spirit guide. Say, look, this is what's on my mind right now. How can you help with me with this problem? Because our spirit guides, our angels, whatever you want to call them, they always want to help us in in one way or another. Uh, Dolores Dolores Cannon talks talks about this a lot. He says, you know, when you, we connect more with our spirit guides and our angels, they will always want to help you. That we just don't do it enough. So for me, I try to do this um, as much as I can. And then for me, the physical then is also important to that. So I, I go to the gym or I go for a walk pretty much every day because I need to, to kind of set, again, set that tone. The things that you do in the morning, this is why the morning routines are so big. This is why people like Robin Sharma, the 5 a.m. club and everything are such big uh, proponents of this because how you start your day, but also the other part which is very important is also how you end your day. But a lot of emphasis on the, is on the start of the day. So at the end of the day is is gratitude. I go through it and I, I literally reel off in my mind the things that I'm grateful for. And and I always love sharing this. When I go to the toilet, I thank my body after being to the toilet. Because these are little things and the food that I eat. When I eat food, I say thank you for the food. That gratitude is so important. Because the more things that you're grateful for, you, you, you're literally saying to, to life, Thank you for this. Thank you for this. Life said, well, we can bring you more of that. If you want more of this, thank you for the money that just came from that client. Thank you. Life said, okay, well, if, if you're grateful for that, we're, we're happy to bring more. They say, well, thank you for, for all the money that I, I don't even know that's coming to me. So again, all this stuff is, it's like I said, it's not easy to do. You have to be consciously aware of this and get into a habit of doing it consistently. For some people, they can do it every day. I've got clients who, who can't do it every day. But I say long long as you're consistent over a long period of time, great. But for me, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty into this. I'm pretty very focused on this. So for me, I, I do it a lot and it's easy for me to do. But for, for a lot of people, I say, look, find a starting point. Find one thing that you know that you can do every day consistently for, uh, for at least three months. And then after that, start adding in more things. So a lot of people will try and do a lot straight away. I, I used to find this with personal training. People go, can I just train five days a week? I go, no. If you've never trained before, let's start with two days a week. If you can do two days a week for the next three months, then we go to three days. So with everything, start small and then build on it. Find whatever's easiest for you to do, first of all, and then start adding on from then. I love that. And you touch on, normally I ask for a key takeaway, but I feel like everything you just touched on is so important. And you're right. Like even here's an example. How do you run a marathon one step at a time? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? So we're just offering, if you just catch yourself and, t and do better today than yesterday, that 1% better, those compound effects will completely change your life. Yeah, exactly. And same in the gym, you know, every workout, you should either be adding more weight or more reps. That's how the body changes also. Same thing. So, you know, this is why I love that I've worked with the body before because it, it just helped me remind me when I got to the mind. It's the same principles. So if people who are already working in the gym, they already understand the concept. Now that all they've got to do, how do I apply that into the mind? What techniques um, do I or tools do I now add in that I can do that actually do the same thing? Because that's all you, that's all you're doing is you're, you're just repeating over and over again the same things until you get to the point that you want, whatever it is that you want in life. We keep doing it until we've got the results that we're looking for. Yes, I love that. I'd love to wrap up today's interview. Honestly, I feel like we could talk for days and I would love it. But, uh, you know, for time's sake, I have a couple rapid fire questions for you. Sure. What is a quote or motto that you live by? So my one of my favorite quotes is, what someone else thinks about you is none of your business. Yes. Uh, what is the book you're currently reading or highly recommend? 
Um, so I'm reading, which I mentioned, but actually about magic, but I'm actually reading about mentalism and the book name I forget, but it's basically by an ex FBI or CIA, and it's basically telling you about the cues that we have that people give away. So when people are lying, for example, and those kind of things. So it's being able to learning how to read people, and I forget the name of it. It will come may come back to me, but yeah, there, there's a book. Um, it's next, I think, ex FBI guy who is basically a profiler. And um, he's teaching you the things to look for, to watch people's habits and behaviors, where they're lying or when they're not being truthful, or actually, or even when they're kind of being truthful. We all give off different cues. So for me, that stuff kind of fascinates me, understanding people better in that way, because it's not often what people are saying, it's what they're not saying that tells you so much about what's going on. Yeah. All right, final question. What advice would you give your younger self? It, it, I this is funny because I this it's one of those kind of questions that comes up um, every now and then. I I, I replied to this on LinkedIn um, a few months ago because you see it's on LinkedIn quite a few times. People go, "This is what I would say to my younger self," and I did my own version and I said, "I w- I wouldn't say anything to my younger self because if my younger self didn't go through what it had to go through, I couldn't be the person I am today." So what I would say to my younger self was, "Keep going. Whatever you're doing is amazing." Almost like trust the journey too. You know, that's a yeah. reminder I do for myself a lot. Trust the journey. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Always. Dean, this was a phenomenal conversation. Thank you so much for joining me. No, my pleasure, Heather. Really, really good to uh, connect with you.